Hi, Bill. We'll start the webinar shortly. Um, we're just going to give folks a couple of minutes to join. Welcome, and my name is Jessica Leal, and I am the Business and Housing Program Coordinator at San Pablo Economic Development Corporation. Thank you for joining us in today's webinar on formalizing your business. Today, we have representatives from the City of San Pablo, Berkeley Law, and um, M.A. Hayes Co., who will provide you information on legal considerations evolving in starting and growing your business. Before we get started, here are a few housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded and the recording will be avail available on our website at sanpabloedc.org. All attendees are muted. And if you're having technical issues with the audio, feel free to just click on the screen and see if you can enable audio or you might have to rejoin. We welcome questions, so please use the Q&A box that's located at the bottom of your screen, and we will be answering the, question, answering the questions at the end of the presentation. San Pablo EDC is the economic development hub of the region. We offer workshops, trainings for businesses, workforce, future homeowners, and we deliver a wealth of programs. To support and advance, we focus on technical assistance for businesses, membership and sponsorship benefits, access to capital, homeownership, job development and career counseling, degrees and certified trainings, and employment support services. At San Pablo EDC, uh, we connect businesses with resources that can help their business grow. And, um, and these businesses are, well, these services are going to help your business and provide you the tools that you need to be successful. As I mentioned earlier, we have a few guest speakers today. You will hear from the Community Development Department for, from the City of San Pablo. Uh, we have representatives from the planning, building, and licensing um, sectors of the department who will guide you through the process of getting your business license and the permits that you need to establish your business in San Pablo. We will also hear from our business law expert, William Kell, um, who is the director at Berkeley Law. Mr. Kell has been practicing law since 1987 and is teaching clinical programs since 1995. At Berkeley Law, he started the new business counseling practicum and inner which is an interdisciplinary, this interdisciplinary <laughs> clinical program designed to involve law and business students in assisting startup businesses. And last but not least, we will hear from Mr. John Susan Henney, who is specialized in business insurance since 1983 at MA Hayes Co. And we and he will be providing you with information on how to keep your business protected with the proper insurance coverage. And now let me turn it over to Ms. Libby Tyler, the Community Development Director of the City of San Pablo. Thank you, Jessica. And uh, good morning, everyone. Happy to be here. Um, I am the Community Development Director for the City of San Pablo. And uh, we are right here, uh, very close to the EDC in the same building, as a matter of fact, 1000 Gateway. And uh, we're on the second floor. We have a permit center. The functions of our department are broadly include planning. I'm a city planner by trade. And we also have our building services division. And uh, we'll be hearing shortly from our chief building official, Oscar Davalos. In addition, we have a number of programs that we run, including business licensing, which I know will be of interest to those uh, attending and listening to this webinar. And we have also this morning, Jessica Arroyo, who administers that program. In addition, we have a residential health and safety program uh, where we help people with real estate transfers to make sure that those housing units are safe and ready to transfer. And also for rental units, 
and apartments, multifamily throughout San Pablo. We do systematic inspections, again, to make sure that the uh, residential units that our residents uh, rent are also code compliant. So we have a lot of functions that we do. Um, I'd like to talk first a little bit about planning as that's my expertise. And um, when you're looking at opening a business, the land use planning question is maybe the biggest question and often a question that might be answered first. And um, what I'm talking about would be the types of projects where you're going to be uh, taking, taking a current use and, and changing it. Um, we don't have um, as much of the planning uh, needs when you're just doing a tenant fit out for an already existing shopping uh, space, commercial space, or office space. Uh, but always a very good question, and certainly before you sign a lease or purchase property, is to find out whether your anticipated use, your business use, is allowed in that location. So this is very basic. We answer these questions every day, and um, we have guidance in the city of San Pablo. All cities in California have a general plan, and a general plan is I love these documents. I don't know if others will as well, but it gives a vision for the city and it includes policies. It often includes an economic development or business section and it has maps and the maps show those future land use uh, designations for every property in the city. Those designations line up with zoning and we know zoning is a regulation. It's in our municipal code so those uh, zoning regulations uh, really dictate or tell you what type of use you can have on a property. And they also tell you how you uh, might need to design that use, how many parking spaces to provide, what your setbacks from the, uh, the street line might be, how high you can go, how big the building can be. We call those development regulations. In San Pablo, not only do we have our zoning, regulations as every city in California does, uh, but we have some special planning areas. These are our specific plans. And we have two um, that we use quite a bit, one along pretty much a whole San Pablo Avenue corridor. This is a lot of our businesses in this area. So this is a, a really detailed document. It has a lot of drawings and visions. And so a lot of the new things happening in San Pablo have come about because of the San Pablo Avenue specific plan. We have an older specific plan that extends along 23rd Street, and we're currently working on a new one for Rumrell Boulevard. So we do pay special attention to our business corridors. Um, I'd like to just take a moment to show you our um, website, and this will help you to navigate to some of our resources. And hopefully uh, you're able to see the, the screen here with community development, if I can get a thumbs up. Thank you. So this is our landing page for community development. We're one of several departments in the city. So you go to departments and then um, here's our um, overall page. I, I'm there as the director. Uh, so we have the building services that would be Oscar Davalos's area. We have business licenses. We'll hear from Jessica shortly. Uh, I've talked about residential health and safety. We have housing programs we connect residents with. And I'm just gonna click on the building and zoning here uh, to show you some of the things um, that you can actually submit an application online. You can see what, what the fees might be. And some of the things that we deal with in, in planning and zoning, um, our general plan is here, that specific plan that I mentioned. And um, just to, to note that there are some common things that you might come to planning for would be design review, um, how it fits with those development regulations, and maybe you might need a use permit. Certain uses do need a use permit. Um, some don't, but uh, and the use permit can be issued by staff. We call that administrative, or it may go to the planning commission. And the Planning Commission also looks at major design review, which would be anything over about a 250 square foot addition for commercial or four units for multifamily. 
And then uh, just going back to show you uh, navigating this, uh, this would be the landing page for uh, Oscar Davalos's group. And this would be the landing page for Jessica's program. And um, I think at this point, I am going to turn it over to Oscar Davalos, who's going to talk about obtaining building permits. Thank you. Good morning, San Pablo. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, the first thing that I want to highlight is um, the fact that we work for you. You know, sometimes uh, visiting the public counter can be intimidating and uh, could be um, really scary for some people. But keep in mind that we work for you and, and this is the attitude that we uh, project to all our staff. You know, we're public servants and we're here to help you. Whenever you want to establish a business, it's very important, as Libby mentioned, to do your due diligence before you sign the lease. Because just as an example, you should talk about the land use, you know, whether it's permitted by right or you would need a condition use permit, um, which could be a costful process. So the same goes with the occupancy type. If you have a, an actual office space, and then suddenly you want to uh, rent a place so you can establish a restaurant there. Uh, you would not be able to do that uh, before you actually submit for an actual tenant improvement that gets reviewed by planning, by building, by public works, and also outside agencies such as the fire district. So sometimes you know you need to take in consideration these steps just to make sure your business thrives. You know we don't want your business to fail before it even gets started. So while you're searching around for properties, take a, a drive to City Hall, come and see us. You know, um, we will come out to the counter and speak to you. There's no charge for that. This is a service that we provide. Uh, we will look at the area to see if the use is permitted by right. And then we also take a look at the, the last use that the facility had to see whether or not you will be required to do, you know, a tenant improvement for, for the place. Also, if you already have a business in the city and you want to change the operations or perhaps you have a, a, a market and you want to add a little portion where you can prepare food and everything, uh, come and see us. We will direct you to the right departments. You know, one would be the health department and then we'll let you know what would be needed for you to do the tenant improvement. So uh, very important, you know, to come and see us. Um, now I'm going to pass it over to Jessica Rojo, who happens to be the licensing specialist in our city. And at the end, you'll have an opportunity to ask us any questions that you may have. Uh, remember, we're here for you, but I want to keep it short so I can let uh, Jesse give you some very important information about licensing in our city. Jessica? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica. I'm usually the first person, um, first point of contact for uh, potential new business owners and existing business owners. Um, I am the one who would walk you through the whole process. Um, as Libby and Oscar stated, um, generally you'd speak to planning first about zoning to make sure that type of business would be allowed in that zone and that the, it is the correct occupancy or if a change of occupancy is required. Um, I would also walk you through uh, the different permits and supporting documents we would need from outside agencies. Um, one of the most common permits that we require is a, a fire permit. So uh, the fire department would have to go and inspect the unit um, and uh, you would provide me with the, the permit um, and any other supporting documents before a, a business license is issued. We also do um, a city inspection. That would be the final step in the process um, where the city goes and inspects uh, the location. Um, once the inspection is passed, then a business license can be issued. Um, so for any business license questions, um, we do have a checklist on our website. Uh, the website that Libby showed, um, the, the checklist shows uh, the contact information for all the outside agencies, but I would be the point of contact uh, to inform you which documents from the checklist we would need. Um, so I'm here to, you can either call our main number or uh, send us an email at our business license email. Um, it can answer any questions. Um, and I highly recommend that you reach out to us um, if you're an existing business and you wanna make changes to your business um, reach out to us before the changes are made. 
um, that way we can make sure that uh, we are we're following the correct processes and um, that you are not um, wasting your time or spending money on things that will um, not be allowed. So we just want to direct you in the, the right process, but I'm happy to answer any questions, um, any specific business type questions. Um, I'm here to help. Um, so with that being said, um, I'll pass it on now to our representative from Berkeley Law, William Kell. Uh, thanks for having me today. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, uh, say just a quick uh, question. Um, uh, how much time do I have? About what? Five, 10 minutes? Five minutes? 15 minutes. 15 minutes for me? Yeah. Just for mm -hmm. me? Wow, that's so nice of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'll use it well. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so uh, we're at Berkeley Law. It's the new business community law clinic, a new name um, that um, maybe hopefully you've heard about. We provide free legal help to businesses that can't afford an attorney, which is almost any small business, because about $400 an hour is much harder to pay when you're not even paying yourself sometimes. So uh, what we would say is, um, yeah, definitely look us up uh, to get some individualized advice. What I'll give you today is some general overview of formalizing your business. But we do have office hours uh, Monday, Wednesday, 11 to 6. You sign up through our website, which I'll put in the chat after I finish talking. Also, and I'll give an email to, you know, email us directly to uh, try and set up an office hour appointment. Um, so I guess one of the first things I think of when I think of formalizing a business is, you know, taking advantage of the different protections that the law has for entrepreneurs. And also, I think about what funders might be looking for down the way. And our big purpose is to try and keep you fundable, <laughs> meaning, you know, having a, a profile, having your legal ducks in a row, such that, you know, your really good idea uh, for getting funding, you know, either a loan or investment doesn't get, you know, sort of clouded by what looks like maybe some legal risks that a funder might take because they see you haven't like formed an entity or they see you're using, you know, handshake deals instead of written contracts, things like that. There's lots of ideas that we have for how to make yourself look more attractive for funders. Um, but most important to just protect yourself uh, as an entrepreneur, because you're going to be taking some risks and there's, you know, that's just inherent in doing a business, but needless risks are what we try and help you avoid. Okay. So the first thing I think about is forming an entity. Okay. Uh, there's several benefits from forming a legal entity, you know, separating yourself from the obligations of the business. Um, that can mean, you know, potentially, you know, a loan that you take on uh, is a loan that the business takes on and not you personally. Sometimes it's hard to do that if you don't have a good credit history or if you don't have a history of the business, you know, having its own accounts and stuff. But, you know, there are ways to set up the obligations of the business, the contractual obligations of the business, so that they don't go right to you personally. And when I mean personally, personal liability means that you are on the hook for everything. You are on the hook and you have to use all of your resources, your car, your house, your savings account, everything to cover it. Well, in that situation, I would tend to choose, you know, limited liability. <laughs> limited liability requires that you actually take affirmative steps to set up at least one of two kinds of entities. That would be an LLC, which I'll tell you about how to do that real quick, uh, or a corporation. One of those two kinds of entities in the state of California will give you this separation that you're looking for from your business obligations. Um, a couple other things that the entity helps you do is, as I mentioned, you know, apply for capital. You know, it's very hard for an investor or, well, it's not hard for a bank to write a personal loan to a sole proprietor uh, or a partnership. It's just, yeah, you're on the hook for, for everything that you're uh, promising there to pay back. Um, but there's a really important part for folks who are undocumented. Undocumented folks may feel like, well, why would I use the law, which has been so unfriendly to me all this time? Well, here it is really your friend, because what you're, you probably want to do is form an LLC, a limited liability company, so that you can legally earn profits from that business uh, in the United States. Anybody can own a business in the United States. It's just harder to get yourself paid if you form a corporation. If you form an LLC, then you are simply a profit sharer, just like Donald Trump. Uh, you know, he has plenty of businesses in Dubai, but he's not a resident of Dubai or a legal resident of Dubai. So 
So undocumented folks uh, will tell you real quick how to uh, set up an entity for yourself. But the most important thing to know is if you don't affirmatively st set up one of these entities, the default is either a sole proprietorship, if you're one or married couple, a uh, partnership if it's several people doing the business. And neither of those are limited liability entities. Those, if you are in businesses, one of those, sole provider or partnership, you are on the hook for all of your business obligations personally. And, you know, that's just a situation you would, if you had to do that, you would cover it with lots of insurance. But when the insurance runs out, you know, that's where you provide the backup, unfortunately. So um, I did mention there were several kinds of entities, LLCs, corporations, partnerships, sole proprietorships. Um, let's take a look at the LLC first and think about how that would be set up. So LLCs, you know, I'm a big fan of LLCs because they're really easy to set up. It costs you 70 bucks at the state level. You set it up online at, at BizFile on the Secretary of State's website. Yeah, pay your 70 bucks and you're basically an LLC. Now, I wouldn't form I wouldn't form any entity right near the end of the year. You know, right now would be a good time to do it. Why? Because in the second year of your entity, you're going to start paying this franchise tax for the state of California, one of the downsides, $800 a year minimum. Um it goes up as you have income, you know, closer to 250k or more. Um, but uh, yeah, I would form your entity, you know, now because this means that the rest of 2023 would be your tax holiday year and you'd get a lot of enjoyment out of that rather than if you formed it in November, you'd only get one month worth of this holiday um, because, you know, your second year is on the calendar year, you see. Okay. Um, the other thing you want to do with an LLC is have an operating agreement, which we can give you a nice template for that. Even if you're a single member LLC, there's a couple of different kinds of LLCs. You could be a single member LLC, uh, but this operating agreement takes, um, you know, when you have other people in the business too, it splits up, you know, how, what are the profit shares? Uh, how do they participate in management? Uh, what are the contributions that people have to put in at the beginning in order to play in this LLC? So we can help you set all that up there. Um, there is one downside for an LLC that is a little bit avoidable, and that is that all of the profit that passes through to you is subject to self-employment tax. And there's a way potentially you could take care of that by filing for S corporation tax status. That doesn't change you into a corporation. It just says to the IRS, tax me like an S corporation. And what that means is that you would have all of the profits pass through to you as well as the losses. There wouldn't be a la layer of tax for your entity. Your entity don't, wouldn't pay any tax. It would just uh, do a return. And um, and then all it's saying how all the profits were um, uh, distributed to the owners. And then um, you would just pay tax on your individual tax returns and according to your individual tax brackets there. Okay, now there is another down. So the one downside of the LLC is that you're paying the self-employment tax. But as I said in a minute, I'll tell you how you could possibly deal with that. There is another problem with an LLC, and that is if you have a license, you pretty much can't use it in your LLC. You would have to form probably a professional corporation or practice as a sole proprietor if you have a license. Um, but uh, we can help you sort that out if you have a particular question about your license. A corporation, on the other hand, uh, does have this disadvantage of having two levels of tax. That means that the corporation not only reports their ta their income, but pays tax on that income before it distributes the profits to everybody. Okay, so that's a problem. That's extra tax for you. Um, it, it is easy to form a corporation, but formalities are a problem sometimes. You don't, you know, you got to have board meetings, you got to have minutes. The LLC doesn't require any of that stuff. Um, and then the other aspect is, of course, that $800 a year franchise tax as well. Um, the last thing I'll just mention is uh, for S corporation status, this isn't for everybody. You should talk with your accountant about it. S corporation tax status uh, is a special filing that you do with the IRS. You need to do it with basically within three months of forming your entity for the first time, or you do it within three, uh, I think it's two and a half months after the first of your uh, tax year, so starting in January 1st, okay? Um, 
And what this does for the LLC, it allows you to hire yourself as an employee of the LLC and then pay yourself a reasonable wage. Then the LLC pays your salary and your employer's share of social security taxes. That's what self-employment tax is. And deducts it all as a business expense. So it works pretty well. Uh, but there's one, there's a couple of problems with the S Corp uh, status you got to know. Uh, one is that it only works for human beings. Okay. Uh, can't have an entity that is an S corporation owner. Um, you have to have legal status in the US. So this isn't for undocumented folks. No, I'm sorry. Um, and you have to have a single layer of um, equity, and that means everybody's economic rights have to be the same. And that doesn't work for a lot of investors. They want special preferred shares and stuff like that. Uh, but again, this is a filing you should discuss with your accountant. Uh, but in many ways, we say, you know, this uh, choose an entity that's limited liability if you possibly can just so you can sleep at night if somebody files a lawsuit at you. Um, of course, get lots of insurance, and I'm sure there's some good speakers who will talk about insurance there. Um, lots of other ways to formalize your business, but entity is what I thought we were going to talk about most today. And just contact us if there's more things we can do to um, help you formalize uh, uh, your entity there going forward. Um, I guess the last thing I'll just say is that if you happen to talk to anybody who went to MBA business school or something like that, they might tell you, oh, well, you got to be a Delaware C corporation, <laughs> okay? Um, no, you probably don't need to be a Delaware C corporation unless you really, what we say is, are you going to be looking for big venture capital investment within the next year? If you're not, then don't do that. <laughs> it's like dressing up for the capital ball, when you're not even going to the ball and very maybe you never want to go to the ball um but it's more expense it's you got to pay taxes in delaware you got to pay taxes in california you got to know an attorney who knows both states laws only do it if you have a sense that you're going to be the next sort of moonshot you know um scaling corporation stuff of course we can tell you how to do that going forward but um yeah choose your entity carefully we can help you choose that um, lots of other ways to formalize your business, but those are some of the main things I would say. <clears throat> Was that within the time? I hope so. <laughs> I'll, I'll put uh, in the chat our contact information. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill. We really appreciate all the information you shared. Mm -hmm. And now we'll turn it over to Mr. John from M.A. Hayes. Well, thank you very much. Good morning to everybody. Um, just a quick overview, M.A. Hayes Company has been in business since 1912, selling insurance, home insurance, auto insurance, business insurance. And I would have to admit, when you look over here at Nico, that he looks pretty good for 111 years old, wouldn't you say? Huh? I think he does. I think he does. So the presentations here already this morning have been very good and very simple and very practical, which starting out in a new business, I think it's very good to keep it simple. So on the insurance side, I just wanted to touch on three coverages, general liability, property insurance, and workers' compensation insurance. So as Oscar was talking about earlier, if you have a lease or if you are gonna purchase a building, it's very important to find out what the insurance requirements are going to be for your business and specifically your business location. So if you're leasing or renting a piece of property, read the lease, or have Bill help you with the lease, because the requirements could be maybe that you're responsible for insurance for the entire building and not just for your own business or your own property. And so that's really important and that's good information that Oscar gave out. So to begin with, general liability insurance is something that you should have and must have because as Bill talked about, if you're an independent business and by chance you don't have insurance, which you shouldn't have, 
You know, you should have it. But if you don't have it, all of your personal assets come into play. And that's why you want to buy insurance so that you protect the personal assets that you have acquired and you work so hard every day to get. So normally in a business policy, you have a million dollars of protection per claim with a $2 million aggregate or total for the policy year. And there usually is not a deductible. So this protects you if somebody comes into your business, slips and falls perhaps, or they sign a contract with you and they tell you that you haven't lived up to your contract, you haven't delivered on your goods. So general liability is the foundation of your insurance, okay? And it will protect your business. And more importantly, it will protect you and your personal assets if you have business insurance, okay? Um, on your property insurance, as I said, make sure you read the lease to make sure you're not responsible for other people's property. And you want to insure your computers, your tables, your chairs. Uh, it also covers accounts receivable and the paperwork that you uh, use with your clients. And some coverage also includes a little bit of cyber liability. So to have a business policy that combines the million, two million of liability and property coverage, and you probably would want to have a $250 deductible or a $500 property deductible. And usually the minimum premiums for the whole year are uh, $500. They can certainly go up, as Bill mentioned, if you get more assets, you need more protection for your property or you need higher liability, the premium can increase. But normally it runs about $500 a year and most companies allow you to make monthly payments. So it is very affordable. And in addition to being very affordable, it's a necessity to have liability insurance. You must have it to protect your, your business and yourself. Um, thirdly, workers' compensation is a mandatory coverage for your employees, it's mandatory. It is based on the type of work that your employees do and every type of job you can think of has a specific classification and rate assigned to it. And the rate is based on $100 of payroll. So in addition to having general liability and property coverage, if you have employees, you must have workers' compensation coverage, and the state is very thorough about inspecting businesses and asking for your workers' compensation policy. A uh, number of years ago, I had a client that owned a TV store, and the state uh, inspector walked into his office and said, hey, where's your workers' compensation policy? And he said, hey, I just renewed it this week. I don't have the new policy. Well, he said, call your agent up and I'll be back tomorrow at noon. And if you don't have your new uh, certificate of insurance, I'll put a lock on your door, which they do because the state is very serious about employers protecting employees on the job. So for instance, if you have an office, the clerical rate, I'm gonna tell you probably is around 50 cents per hundred of payroll. So your overall annual exposure is probably about $200, $250 to protect your employees if they get injured on the job. And so if you're, employee gets injured on the job and you send them to Kaiser Hospital to get their finger stitched up, the admitting nurse is gonna ask, 
did this happen on the job? They'll say, yes, it did. And the second question they ask, what is your policy number? So that the claim gets turned in and taken care of by your workers' comp carrier. So those are the three aspects, simple aspects of business insurance if you're just starting out. Liability insurance for a million dollars, property coverage with at least a $250 deductible, maybe higher, and that helps keep the price down. A package policy of liability and property should be about $500 a year, unless you have more assets or you want higher liability limits. And then third, you must have workers' compensation if you have any employees, okay? So you can talk to 111-year-old Nico about business insurance, or you can uh, stop by and see us at 232 Broadway. Uh, we're open Monday through Friday, uh, nine to five. So please come by and see us. We're happy to help, give free quotes, give advice. And I really think that uh, this has been a very good seminar and I'm glad San Pablo EDC set this up because the information that I've heard is just very, understandable and very practical and helpful, I would think, for somebody uh, starting out. So thank you to all the presenters. Thank you, John. And um, if you could please talk about vehicles for those businesses that have vehicles. Yes, thank you. So if you buy a vehicle or lease a vehicle, in your business name, you're not able to put that on your personal auto policy. You need to get a commercial. John, you muted yourself, sorry. How's that? Much better. So you, you insure the vehicle based on the ownership or who bought the vehicle. So uh, that is a separate policy. Normally the limits on commercial auto are similar to the business insurance. And that would be a million dollars for liability protection and a million dollars for uninsured motorists. And depending on the age of the vehicle, you would get comprehensive coverage for vandalism and theft or collision coverage if you're at fault uh, and the vehicle is moving. Um, normally, business uh, auto insurance is more expensive than personal auto insurance. And when I say more expensive, probably in the range from two to $400 more a year on commercial insurance, but at the same time, you're also getting higher limits of coverage to protect you. So if you have a business and you have business auto, your biggest exposure is probably on the road when you're out driving. So uh, if you have a commercial vehicle, please give us a call and we can give you a, a commercial quote so we can protect you and protect your commercial uh, assets. Thank you. Thank you, that was great information. And I see that we have a couple of questions um, in the Q&A, but before we get to questions, for those of you that are watching this webinar, we really encourage that you use the Q&A to submit your questions. And while you're doing so, I just wanna give more information or resources that we have available here at San Pablo ADC. Um, I am sharing my screen of what our platform looks like. So if you visit our website, sanpabloec.org, you will see a tab called Dream Builder. And if you haven't developed your business plan, this is the perfect platform for you to use where it can help you build your business plan, which is very important um, for your business, especially if you're trying to grow your business. So when you're asking for um, loans, that's the first thing they will ask you for. So. I really encourage you to take advantage of this free resource that we have available. Um, another resource that we wanna to share today is that the IRS has a landing page specifically for workshops that are referring to any 
tax information. So please take advantage of that. And um, we will also put the link in the chat. Again, I want to take this opportunity to thank all our speakers for providing great information and resources today. And we wish that you connect with them directly. Their contact information is in the um, screen as well as in the chat. And now we'll turn it over to questions. Let's see. So we have a question here. Um, if I am a corporation owner with no employees, do I need workers comp? You don't, you don't need workers compensation if you are the owner of the business. Um, you have the option if you just have your own business yes you can get workers comp yes you can uh, many owners of a business do not if they have their own medical insurance okay um, so owners can opt out of the coverage if your business has it but if you don't have any employees no you do not need to get it However, I have seen contracts where a uh, sole proprietor has been required to get workers comp just as part of the contract. So we see that every once in a while. It doesn't seem fair to me, but um, it does happen where to be required in a contract. So like Bill said, man, read, read the contract and see what you're getting into because you don't want to have a ton of overhead once you sign that contract right bill absolutely right uh one other thing i would just clarify you don't have to do workers comp with uh, independent contractors <clears throat> just your employees perfect thank you and um something interesting that you just said john so if you don't have health insurance and um your corporation is that a way for for someone to get um, some sort of health insurance through workers comp? Um, I wouldn't exactly call it health insurance as we think of it as 24 seven healthcare because workers comp is only going to help you if you get injured on the job. So if you if you don't have health insurance and you're a sole proprietor, and you slip and fall at the office and you cut your arm, the workers comp would cover you. But at the same time, you're not gonna be gone from work very long because you're by yourself and you gotta open up that business with your arm all stitched up, right? So um, you, do, you can get it and it will protect you from an injury that you get at work. But it's not workers' comp is not 24-7 health care. It's there to protect the employee who gets injured and have the employer take care of that cost. Perfect. Thank you. And we have a question here. What is the website to open an LLC? Yes, I'll put that in the chat. Um, so that would be, uh, it's at the California State, uh, Secretary of State's website. It's called BizFile. Um, and I'll put that in the chat in just a second. Thank you, Bill. Um, and I have a question for you, Bill. Is there a limit on um, number of consultations that people can take advantage from your Berkeley Law? Oh, um, I guess we'd say, um, well, we see, we actually have two kinds of service. We have this office hour kind of service where we talk to you for an hour, basically, and cover whatever we can in the hour. Now, if you're just starting out or if you're a very complex business, then you might want to e use that email that I put in before to um, put in an application or just you know, give me a request saying, you know, you have several legal needs that may need attention. I don't know, you need to uh, form an entity, you need to set up capital, you need to develop some contracts. That's what we call um, extended service. And so we take about uh, 15 businesses every term to work on them, you know, work with them over like a 10 week period with a team of three students. So if, yeah, you have more complex needs, yeah, just, you know, the easiest way to do it is to just email me at that email and tell me what you're looking for. And then we'll slot you into what, you know, 
the more abbreviated service or the more extended service. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Ooh, I should mention we also have, um, and you guys uh, uh, advertise this, every first Friday we have a legal webinar that we do. Yeah, we did uh, commercial leases last month. Uh, this month we did food law. Um, I'm trying to find out which what we're doing next month, but uh, but first Fridays are always a place to get some free legal information on different topics. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that information. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the other question, um, like in a sec. yes, if you can please edit in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a home-based business and you have homeowners um, insurance, is that still covering any injuries? Sorry, John, you're muted. Normally, normally in a homeowner's policy, it is for personal use. And in the language of the homeowner's policy, there is an exclusion for a business exposure. So if you have a home-based business, the home insurance does not want to cover you for clients coming into your house the exposure is much greater um, with people coming into your house in a home-based business and homeowner's insurance does not want to pick that up. So business is normally excluded on a policy. So you would get a regular commercial policy for that, which then again would give you a million dollars of liability protection compared to your homeowner's policy where you might have 300,000 or 500,000 at the most of liability protection. So it's all, I mean, for the protection part of your business, it's always better to get a specific commercial policy to protect your business. Thank you. And then this one, I guess, is for the city of San Pablo. Can I renew my business online? My business license, sorry. Hi. Um, well, uh, we don't have uh, an online portal set up yet. We're hoping um, to update our system soon to have one. But um, what we can do is uh, you can email the renewal, um, and we have a credit card authorization form on our website. So you can email both uh, to the business license email, which is on the website as well. Um, that way you don't have to come in in person. Um, and then once we will confirm we received it and then we'll process and mail it out. Perfect, thank you. And I believe all the resources are available in the chat. So feel free to take a moment and um, get those resources. And before we end this presentation, here's a small quote. Um, <clears throat> small businesses isn't for a faint of heart. It's for the brave, the patient, and the persistent. It's for the overcomer. So becoming a business owner requires a lot of dedication and perseverance. So we acknowledge that at San Pablo ADC, which is why we provide these resources and the tools that you need to be successful. And um, we welcome you to visit our website to watch all the on-demand um, recordings that we have available. This presentation will also be on our website. So feel free to, if you need to watch it again and um, have access to the resources. And again, thank you all for attending today's presentation and for the presenters. Um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to contact um, Suhei Mojica, who is the manager of our business and housing um, department, and or myself, I'm the coordinator of the program. So thank you again. Thank you all and hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.